thick brush of the forest without becoming tangled up in it. To the right back there along the you can see an okapi. A lot of people think the okapi are related to the zebra because of those stripes along their legs. They're actually closely related to the giraffe because they have a long prehensile tongue. Prehensile just means it's going to act like a finger and help them grab things. Now we actually did not know the okapi existed until 1901. Oh, right. These are saddle-built storks. Wow! They get their name from a yellow patch on their belly. Looks like a seven. Now one of the best ways we can help the animals that live here in the forest, we can recycle our paper. That is going to help save a lot of these trees and in return help protect these animals' natural habitat. Alright, so way back here to the left, kind of through the trees and bushes there, you're going to see some light tan animals. Those are the greater kudu. They're the second tallest antelope, going to stand about 55 inches at the shoulder and weigh about 750 pounds. Now we are going to be leaving the Little Aturi Forest and next up going to be headed towards the Safi River area. The Safi River. Mira. Mira. It's like, uh, we're here to the left in the water here as we stay seated. You may start to see a couple of hippopotamus there. Hippos can sometimes be a little bit tougher to see, mostly because they can hold their breath yeah, underwater water yeah. for around eight minutes. Let's check. Friends in the back, let's make sure we're sitting down, please. Thank you. Now their ears, eyes, and nose are all on the top of their heads. That's going to help them come up for air without having to be completely. Which is helpful to ward off predators. Hey, whatever it is. are vegetarian. <laughs> Continue to stay seated. Coming up over here to the left, you're going to start to see some Nile crocodiles. Nile oh, crocodiles are about as long as a giraffe is. It's about 18 to 20 feet. You may notice some of them might have their mouths open. That's because they are cold-blooded reptiles. They can't sweat. So they're actually going to keep that mouth open to help regulate their mouth. Out of here, but it is excellent at storing water, which is how it gets its other nickname, the Tree of Life. As we head down onto the savannah, one of the ways it gets its unique landscape gill just up above your heads will come in handy. Kinda a little warm at times, and it's a little rainy at times today, so some of the animals that can be kind of be hanging out in areas with a lot of shade. Uh, not all of them, but some of them, so that's one of the areas we're going to want to pay attention to today as we're moving through the savannah. Make sure we're all sitting down, friends, on the lap or seat. Word on the yeah, here's like lions. They are the official emblem of the Harambe Wildlife Preserve because they are tough, courageous, and stick together. That's what Harambe means, to come together. Also, I noticed this really large antelope over here to the left. That is the eland. Eland are the largest antelope, going to weigh about 2,000 pounds fully grown. Both the males and the females will have those curved back horns. Wow! Use them as a scratching post. They tend to knock them over like that mound over there to the right, but no worries. That is when the smaller animals, like the, animals. the animals with the really long horns oh. over there to the right, those are the Ancoli oh, yeah. cattle, also yeah. known as Watusi cattle from the tribe that first domesticated them. And those horns are going to be about three to four feet on each side, and inside those horns anywhere between 900 to 1,200 pounds, and the bulls will weigh anywhere between 1,000 to 1,600 pounds. So they are a migration of migrating anywhere between 500 to 1,000 miles. And as we start to turn the corner coming up, we'll start to see a few of those Maasai giraffes. Fully grown, the Maasai giraffe will stand about 18 to 20 feet tall. They have an 18-inch long tongue that will help them grab that vegetation that is high up in the trees. And then as a human species, no two giraffes are going to have the same spot pattern. When giraffes are born, they are about 6 feet tall. And they'll drop 6 feet to the ground whenever they're born. A lot of the other hoofstock animals, they are one of those animals that are, for the most part, going to be born at night. Group of giraffes is also known as a tower. A little bit more of that tower of giraffes over here to the left. Part of the size of a basketball. There's more so giraffes. Have the highest blood pressures in any animal. Come in. No, 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 no,
vegetariano. Qué alivio. Yo no la comé. Si fuera un león, no comería. Oh, sí. Okay, back there to the right. I get a quick view of an African elephant. One of the ways we know this isn't. It's an elephant. Wow. Also, if you look at their ears, their ears are large. It's an elephant. It's a bird. Like the shape of the continent of Africa. I think I just see the one of the source of income for the farmers in the honey that the bees produce. So it is a legend for everyone, and it's just another way we can learn to live with nature. You may notice the wave those ears back and forth, and that's because those ears are filled with blood vessels, so when they wave it back and forth, it is just going to act as a way to help keep them from their diet of shrimp, which is rich in beta-carotene. Uh, so those gray ones, they actually won't reach that full pink coloration until they're about two oh years my old. God. Fully Don't grown, they're going to stand die. about five feet tall. They're the largest of all the flamingos. Now in terms of their pink coloration, though, they're actually the lightest shade of pink of all the flamingos. One of the ways the flamingos will stay cool in the hot sun of the savannah is they'll stand on one leg. This helps to increase their blood circulation and in return helps yes, keep it Papa. nice. Okay, cool. Maybe two cheetahs hanging out over here. Whoa, so a little bit tougher to see. So look for the lightest thing we can see. Uh, cheetahs are the fastest land animals. They can actually run at an average speed of 60 miles an hour. However, they can only maintain that speed for a couple hundred yards. Which have no value to humans. Now you may notice one of the really small ones back there in the dirt. It's one of two baby white rhinos born just towards the end of this last year, right here on the reserve. So we'll probably get one more view of those rhinos here. Those numbers have came back up. So it's like this are still one of the places you can't see the Mazabak. And there's the ostrich and the largest flightless bird. Can run at an average speed of 40 miles an hour. Although they can't fly, they use those large wings to help them steer whenever they're running. And these are the ostrich eggs on the ground here to the right. Those eggs are very large, rich in calcium. Get about three dozen chicken eggs in one ostrich egg. And they produce some milk that is very sweet and nutritious and also very valuable. So farmers in this area will use that as another source of income and to help reduce the dependence on other animals. And the yellow box out front, that is a beehive fence, like the ones we talked about earlier with the elephants and the bees. So both of these are just two really great ways we can learn to live with nature. There's a lot of great ways all of us on board can help nature. Some of the easiest being we can visit zoos, national parks, and wildlife refuges. That is where you're visiting. Alrighty, friends. So we are going to be approaching the unload dock.